Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely T T V show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely T T V show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Cancel culture refers to the popular practice of withdrawing support for public figures or companies after they have done or said something considered objectionable. Or offensive. Through cancel culture, society expresses its condemnation and blame. If criticism is directed at that person, the public may insist on depriving that individual of influence, power, and the opportunity to continue their professional public life. Canceling can erase an individual's entire life and destroy everything that they have ever created. Kanye West is the definition of controversy, from his humble beginnings all the way to his grandiose luxury lifestyle. He is the first person to tell you that he deserves his wealth and fame, and he also loves to remind everyone that he is a black billionaire. Kanye West became involved in the hip-hop scene in Chicago as a teenager, and he started making beats for local artists. Yo, it's the lake shore, dry, keep it live, tight, boy. Then he eventually developed a unique style that changed the face of hip-hop forever. Normally, Kanye West is known for being canceled on Twitter. Mainly people who are not fans of Kanye have canceled him over the years, but this is the worst I've ever seen it. He is not only being canceled by the social media mob, but he is currently being canceled by multiple global financial entities, multiple businesses. So many companies have literally left Kanye West high and dry. So I'm going to do a breakdown of all of the companies that have basically parted ways with Kanye West in the past 72 hours. Let me go ahead and start. So let me take y'all back to how all of this started. If you guys don't know, it all started at the beginning of October, around October 3rd. And so what initially happened is that Kanye West, along with Candace Owens, they decided to take to social media to show off his White Lives Matter shirt during the Balenciaga fashion show in Paris. And so one of the first people to speak out against Kanye West was Jaden Smith. He got onto social media and he basically said he didn't care whose show it was. He says, I don't feel the message. I'm out. Black Lives Matter. Shortly after that, Diddy um, spoke out as well on his own platform. And he also took to the Breakfast Club and he said that Black Lives Matter and don't play with it. So now around the 9th, um, Kanye took to Twitter and he basically wrote on Twitter, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going DEFCON 3 on Jewish people. So he had tweeted that on October 8th, and people were pissed, especially in the Jewish community. He was basically banned and removed from Twitter after that. Jamie Lee Curtis even took to an interview where she cried and said that, you know, she felt extremely hurt. She was extremely upset about Kanye West's tweet. Kanye West tweeted um, on uh, just recently, and I, I'll read it. It was yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday morning. He wrote, I woke up to this. Yeah, this is what he said, in case people don't know. I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. And then he goes on to say, the funny thing is, I can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jew also. You guys have... T anyway, he goes on. You saw that tweet, and you responded immediately saying this. Also... On October 9th, the holiest day in Judaism was last week. Words matter. A threat to Jewish people ended once in genocide. Your words hurt and incite violence. You are a father. Please stop. I burst into tears. I woke up and burst into tears. DEFCON 3 on Jewish people? What are you doing? This is, it's, it's, I mean, it's bad enough that fascism is on the rise around the world, but on Twitter, on a, on a portal to pour that in as if Jewish people haven't had it hard enough. Yes. I have never seen your eyes well up oh, in I'm anger sorry. like that. I literally, yeah, I woke up that. and was, I thought, my grandparents? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, it's, it's just abhorrent. Yeah. It's abhorrent behavior. I hope he gets help. I hope his children get mm -hmm. help from him. Mm hmm Wow. It's terrible. Yeah, it's been a it's 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 caused a lot, a ton and ton of reaction. And so and if we aren't reacting, yeah. who are we? Yeah. 
So then between the weeks of October 10th through the 17th, people started to notice a decline in his radio plays after his anti-Semitic tweets. Um, according to Luminate, West's daily spins declined by 21.1% from 325% eight days preceding his social media restrictions and all of the drama. So his audience basically fell about about 21.4%. Around October 19th, the CEO of Endeavor, um, his name is Ari Emanuel, he took to his Financial Times and he published an article and he basically asked all of Kanye West's business partners to cut ties with him. And he was calling on Apple, Spotify. He called on Adidas and many more to basically stop. And this was also after um, Kanye came out and said that he was going to buy Parler. And he also urged Parler to not go through with the rapper's acquisition of that platform. He went on to say, West is just not any person. He is a pop culture icon with millions of fans around the world. And amongst them are young people whose views are still being formed. This is why it's necessary for all of us to speak out. Hatred and anti-Semitism should have no place in our society, no matter how much money is at stake. Those who continue to do business with West are giving his misguided hate an audience. There should be no tolerance anywhere for West's anti-Semitism. So that is what Ari Emanuel had to say. A few days after that, Balenciaga on October 21st ended their relationship with Kanye West. Balenciaga's parent company issued a brief statement, and they basically stated this. Balenciaga has no longer any relationship nor any plans for future projects related to this artist. So that is the statement that they issued out. On October 24th, Kim Kardashian finally spoke out as well. She took to her social media page and she wrote the following. Hate speech is never okay or excusable. I stand together with the Jewish community and call on the terrible violence and hateful rhetoric towards them to come to an immediate end. And Kim wrote that um, also after people were hanging things on the 405 overpass, basically condemning Jews and saying that they agreed with Kanye West. Meanwhile, Khloe Kardashian shared a message on her Instagram story, and it came from a cookbook author. Um, that person's name is Jessica Steinfield, and Jessica Steinfield wrote, I support my Jewish friends and the Jewish people, and that's what Khloe reposted. Now, on October 24th, we all found out that basically there was a completed documentary about Kanye West, only to find out per MCR, the people who were producing the documentary, they sent out a formal announcement stating that the documentary will no longer be up for distribution, and this is what they wrote. This morning, after discussion with our filmmakers and distribution partners, we made the decision not to proceed with any distribution of our recently completed documentary about Kanye West. Then the following CEOs sent out a joint statement. The CEOs were Madi Wysik, CEO Asa Sachu and COO Scott Tenley, they wrote a joint they wrote a joint statement stating, "We cannot support any content that amplifies his platform." Kanye West is a producer and a sampler of music, and last week he sampled and remixed a classic tune that charted for over three thousand years. The lies that Jews are evil and conspire to control the world for their own gain. Kanye has now helped to mainstream it in this modern era. So that is what MCR wrote, and that is also what the CEOs wrote as well to Kanye West. So that documentary has now been officially scrapped. On the same day, October 24th, he was also dropped by the Creative Arts Agency. A representative for CAA confirmed with Billboard that Ye is no longer a client of theirs. The rapper joined CAA in 2012 to follow agent Cara Lewis, but chose to stay represented by the agency even after Lewis's departure in 2016. Now, they have a rival agency, which a lot of people in L.A. know about, and that is UTA. And UTA, who doesn't even have any affiliation to Kanye, came out and made their own stance as well. On October 24th, later on that day, the CEO, Jeremy Zimmer, he sent a company-wide email stated the rise of anti-Semitism and hate 
and stated that Wes's comments will embolden others to amplify their vile beliefs. And he added that we cannot support hate speech, bigotry, or anti-Semitism. Please support us in the boycott of Kanye West. So basically meaning that UTA, even if Kanye came to them and said, hey, I want you guys to represent me, the answer before Kanye can even ask them is no. After facing endless pressure and phone calls to end their relationship with Ye, Adidas finally made a decision to cut ties with the rapper on October 25th, ending a nearly 10-year partnership that saw the launch of the popular, lucrative Yeezy sneakers. Adidas sent out the following statement. Adidas does not tolerate anti-Semitism and any other sort of hate speech. Ye's recent comments and actions have been unacceptable, hateful, and dangerous. And they violate the company's values of diversity and inclusion, of diversity, inclusion, and mutual respect and fairness. Adidas also revealed in the statement that it conducted a thorough review and would cease production of all Yeezy products, as well as payments to Ye, and his respective companies. The sportwear company added that the move would cost them $246 million in profit. This deal also cost Ye his billionaire status, and it dropped his net worth from being a billionaire to $400 million, according to Forbes magazine. Gap also decided to pull all Yeezy products from their shelves. So Gap released the following statement. In September, Gap had announced ending its Yeezy Gap partnership. Our former partner's recent remarks and behavior further underscore why we are taking immediate steps to remove Yeezy Gap products from our stores and we have shut down YeezyGap.com. Anti-Semitism, racism, and hate in any form are inexcusable and not tolerated in accordance with our values. The Gap continued. On behalf of our customers, employees, and shareholders, we are partnering with organizations to combat hate and discrimination. On the 25th, Foot Locker dropped Yeezy products as well. So keeping in line with Adidas and Gap, Foot Locker issued the following statement. They said, Foot Locker Inc. does not tolerate any form of anti-Semitism or hateful and discriminatory behavior. We have instructed our retail operators to pull any existing products from our shelves and digital sites. So on October 25th, Spotify CEO, he did a quick interview with Rutgers and basically the CEO, who is Daniel Eck, he described Kanye's remarks as awful, but he noted that the rapper's comments did not violate Spotify's anti-hate speech policy because they were not made on the musical streaming platform. It wasn't in his music. He said it on another platform. Um, several individuals have been calling for streaming giants to pull Ye's music, but Eck has asserted that Ye's music will only come down if he or his label requests it. He says it's really just his music and his music doesn't violate our policy. It's up to him or his labels um, what type of action they want to take. So that was his response to the drama. The same day, a lot of stuff went down on the 25th. The same day, Universal Music Group, um, who previously worked with Ye under Def Jam, under his Def Jam label and his merchandise company, Bravado, clarified to Billboard on October 25th that they have ceased all relations with the rapper in 2021 and denounced his anti-Semitic comments. They state this. Def Jam's relationship with Ye as a recording artist, Def Jam's partnership with good music label Venture, and Ye's merchandise agreement with Bravado all ended in 2021. There is no place for anti-Semitism in society, and we are deeply committed to combating anti-Semitism and every other form of prejudice. Sony Music also came out and had something to say as well. Um, they stated this, at the Sony Music Group, we are committed to tolerance and equality for all, for all at the heart of who we are as a company consistent with these values we denounce anti-semitism throughout our partnership with uja with uja federation we work to combat prejudice against the jewish community also on october 25th aaron aaron donald and jalen brown parted way with donda sports the la the la rams defensive tackle aaron 
Aaron Donald tweeted on the 25th that he was severing ties with Ye's Donda Sports in light of the rapper's anti-Semitic remarks. He says, our family has made the decision to part ways with Donda Sports. The recent comments and displays of hate and anti-Semitism are the exact opposite of how we choose to live our lives and raise our children. We find them to be irresponsible and go against everything we believe in as a family. So that is what Aaron Donald had to say. Jalen Brown said the following. He plays for the Boston Celtics. He's a shooting guard. And he stated this. I've been able to reflect and better understand how my previous statements lack clarity in expressing my stance against the insensitive public remarks and actions. I have always and will always continue to stand strongly against any anti-Semitism, hate speech, misrepresentation, and oppressive rhetoric of any kind. Now we move on to the 26th. TJ Maxx announced it will not be purchasing any Yeezy products. So this is what TJ Maxx said. They stated, at TJ Maxx, we do not tolerate this. We do not tolerate discrimination, harassment, or hate of any kind. We have instructed our buying teams not to purchase this merchandise for sale in any of our stores globally. Also on the 26th, the Donda Academy basketball team was removed from their tournament. So the Scholastic Play-by-Play Classic announced on Wednesday that it was dropping Kanye West's Donda Academy team from the season schedule, and they stated this, While we are firm in our reason for our decision, it does not diminish our heartache and regret for the Donda's hardworking athletes who will lose out, who will lose out the most as a result of Kanye's actions. Unfortunately, we cannot in good conscience host an organization founded and directed by Mr. West at our events. Also on the 26th, his wax figure from Madame Trousseau was removed in London. So they sent out a statement. They said this, Ye's figure has been retired from the attraction floor to our archives. Each profile earns their place at the Madame Trousseau London, and we listen to our guests and the public on who they expect to see at the attraction. Basically because it was so basically because there was a lot of global public outrage and outcry, they removed him off of the floor. Also on the 26th of October, a major law firm dropped Kanye. The Manhattan law firm called Walder, Wickersham, and Taft, which represented West in September in his efforts to terminate his partnership with Gap. They came out and they stated they are no longer working with the rapper. This was stated in, Blo- in Bloomberg Law. Um, this is what they stated. We are not presently providing any representation and have no intentions of providing any future representation. Brown Ruddick, whose lawyer Camille Vasquez represented Johnny Depp in his defamation trial earlier this year. They also confirmed that they are no longer working with Ye as first reported by the New York Post. So that was just as of yesterday. Now we wake up this morning and there's even more cancellations. So what happened was yesterday, Kanye West decided to show up to the Skechers headquarters and supposedly he was going up there to talk to them to see if they were willing to, you know, work with him on his brand. So this news just dropped today. They're stating a day after Ye was dropped by Adidas, he seemed to have tried his luck at another shoe brand. The Yeezy designer showed up uninvited at the Skechers corporate offices in Manhattan Beach and was turned away, the shoe company confirmed. New tonight, the latest fallout with Kanye West and his anti-Semitic remarks. He's been trying to save his lucrative clothing line, including his shoe line, Yeezy Shoes, but today he got kicked out of the Skechers Manhattan Beach headquarters after he showed up unannounced with a film crew. Let's go live to Fox 11's Ed Lascos to try to figure out what happened there. Ed. And I'll tell you, he really seems to be persona non grata as all of this continues to play out for Kanye. Certainly not welcome in many of his business partnerships and ventures any much recently. And now it seems even Kanye himself not welcomed, especially here at Skechers. He shows up, then he is asked to leave, and then he is escorted out of the building. Here's the latest. Watch. The executive offices of Skechers, it is here, yay, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West, shows up uninvited and unannounced and is quickly escorted off the property with the shoe company later stressing Skechers has no intention of working with West. 
the same people. This is just the latest controversial development for Kanye following his recent outburst of hate speech and anti-Semitism. Comments that have already cost Kanye big time being dropped by several of his business and professional partners the last few weeks. They said Skechers is not considering and has no intentions of working with Wes. We condemn his recent divisive remarks and do not tolerate anti-Semitism or any form of hate speech. The company would like to again stress that Kanye West showed up unannounced and uninvited to the Skechers corporate offices. Now, as of this morning, it was also announced that Peloton told its members that they will no longer use Kanye West's music in their class. So there's a really popular um, Peloton instructor. His name is Alex Troussant, and he's a popular cyclist on the app. And basically, while he was in class, one of Kanye West's songs ended up playing and he stopped the song as soon as it, you know, came on. And he basically told the class, you know, that he does not tolerate any type of hate speech and he stands with the Jewish community and that he would no longer be cycling to Kanye West's music. You no, know, I stand with you. You will not hear the artists in my class at all. I promise y'all, I do not support hate speech whatsoever, baby. I don't tolerate that shit at all, all right? All right, so you guys just saw that video. So shortly after that, Peloton came out and they made their own decision and they basically stated that we take this issue very seriously and can confirm that Peloton indefinitely paused the use of Kanye West's music on our platforms. This means our instructors are no longer using his music and any newly produced classes we are not suggesting any class that includes his music in our proactive recommendations to its members. They also added, you should know that this was a decision made immediately following his remarks. Again, thank you for sharing your concerns and thank you for being a member of the Peloton community. Now, if that's not crazy enough as well, um, it looks like Apple Music have appeared to join the, the list of businesses distancing themselves from Kanye West. So while they haven't removed all of his music, and I talked about this on my live stream that that may be coming, it looks like they have now pulled Kanye West's essential playlist. Now, Billboard did reach out to Apple for a comment, but Apple has not responded at all. Now, remember, a lot of these streaming companies are not going to have Kanye's back because when he dropped Donda 2, remember, he refused to put his music on the streaming platforms. He he didn't put it on Apple, Spotify, Google, none of that stuff. Remember, he had his own stem player. So these streaming companies may still be mad about that because he talked a lot about independence and, you know, creating his own way. And so I can see these companies eventually falling eventually backing up and taking his music off of their platform altogether. Now it's going to be very interesting to see if stem player ends up standing with Kanye or if they also end up distancing themselves from Kanye West as well. I think the craziest part of all of this is as of an hour ago, Kanye West basically shut down his Donda Academy. So if you guys don't know, Kanye West had opened up the Donda Academy. They had already shut down the basketball team from participating in the tournament. But as of last night, there was a message sent out to all the parents of the Donda Academy. Now, this was a private school. Um, the tuition was $15,000, and they had to sign a bunch of NDAs. So now these families are being told that there's no more school, and they have to figure out where they're going to take their kids to. So this is the letter that was written. Dear Donda Academy families, we hope this email finds you well. First, we would like to express our gratitude for the community of families and scholars that Donda Academy brought together. However, at the discretion of our founder, Donda Academy will close for the remainder of, of the 2022-2023 school year effective immediately. Thursday, October 27th, there is no school tomorrow. Our leadership team will be working diligently to assist all families during this transition, ensuring that every scholar has what they need to succeed in their next community in a prompt and gracious manner. We intend to begin afresh in September of 2023. We are confident that our scholars will continue to advance as the creative innovators, courageous influencers, and academic leaders of our next generation. Thank you for your support. So that was issued out late last night, and it has not hit the internet. So... Also last night, what happened is that basically Kanye West offered offered an apology to the Jewish community um, during his conversation with Lex Friedman. 
He did apologize for his anti-Semitic comments, and he explained that God did not call for him to alienate. So I want you guys to go ahead and check this out. You know why I apologize why I say I'm sorry to the Jewish people that I hurt? It's not about, like I said, oh, I said, I'm not going to hold this apology hostage, right? It's Obviously, it's about God, but God is everything, right? So what's the point of even having language and being, you can't engineer if you say God, 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 right? It's like, it's... God asks us to be judgmental so that you become, if you're a doctor, right? It's your judgment that saves grandma, right? Mm -hmm. And God puts that in this. Like, we have God inside us. We're a piece of God also, right? So I'm going to go specific to a person. That story about da Vinci alone is enough of a reason for me to give a sincere apology to the Jewish people, because I do believe that there's a Da Vinci code inside of all of my misspellings and scribbles right here that God wants me to get to the world. And when I'm in my way, if God has set something on me, when I'm in my way, I'm in God's way. Now I can point at other people and say, Hey, you guys are in God's way because you're not listening to me. But if I'm in my way, I'm not listening to God. And for me to be a philosopher and a leader or whatever other language, I have to listen to God. So before God, what I would do is start off as a samurai and say, I'm sorry for hurting you as a Jewish person. I'm sorry for the way that made you feel. And I'm sorry for the entire uh, population of a race that I feel is actually my brothers because I classify and feel that I'm also connected with Christ in that way that my people came from Africa and that way. And I can't say it's this exact teaching or that exact teaching, but I feel that there's an important, you know, the sons of Abraham, however we want to word it, right. For us to come together and bring our different talents together to serve God collectively. And he, as much of an alien as I am, he does not cause me he did not call for me to alienate. All right, so you guys just saw Kanye West's apology. So after that apology, Kanye also took to Instagram last night and he wrote this. He says, Ari Emanuel, I lost $2 billion in one day and I'm still alive. This is love speech. I still love you. God still loves you. The money is not who I am. The people is who I am. And then he also wrote love speech. So once again, Kanye is still speaking, but you can definitely tell that $2 billion is affecting him big time. Now, we just got some more breaking news as I was editing this video about 10 minutes ago. TMZ came back out with another article that says, Kanye West, just kidding, Donda Academy is back. Now, in a very strange, bizarre twist, this is the new letter that's being sent to staff and parents. They say, dear parents and staff, join us tomorrow morning in worship for the return of Donda Academy. With the help of our parents and community, we are back and returning with a vengeance. The children of Donda are going to change the world. Apologies for the late email. See you bright and early. Early. And then it's somebody's name that's blocked out, Parents of Donda. Now, what I'm thinking is that he might be going back to Donda because that's really honestly what he has right now. Um, the tuition at Donda is 15 grand per child. Now, I'm not sure how many kids go to Donda Academy, but it's quite a few kids. So I think at this point, Kanye is getting desperate and he's not trying to turn down any type of money. Because how do you go from canceling the rest of the school year to now saying, hey, 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 y'all come back. Don't cancel that tuition. Don't ask for that reimbursement quite yet because uh, I have no other funds coming in. So it's going to be very interesting to see if these parents end up staying at Donda or if they end up pulling their kids out, especially being that these kids can't participate in things like tournaments and stuff like that. So I leave the question with you guys. Have you guys seen anything like this? Have you guys seen just major companies just back all the way off of a, a celebrity like this? And how do you guys feel about this? Do you feel like this is, you know, too much? Do you feel like this is what Kanye gets? Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know you guys' thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you have that notification bell on for any future videos. And feel free to share the video as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day.
deuces. You want the latest news in the streets? Join us, sentiment in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So, sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.